All of us are dead, number of theories explained. The show finished season 1 in a way that alluded to there being more hybrid humans out there, and that Namra was currently living among them. I think Namra is going to play a huge part in season 2. So let's jump in. Here is All of Us Are Dead, Namra Theories Explained. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers. From season 1, as a viewer, we were exposed to two different variations of the Jonas virus. We saw the version in which the virus consumed the humans, and essentially gave them strength. However, it rendered their mind to the state of a cabbage, and they could neither think or act without the sole purpose of it being to consume people. They became zombies. Then we saw a version which was a rarer form, and only impacted certain people. It would take them to a point where they gained some of the abilities of the zombies, but they're also immune to being hunted by them. They remain in their own conscious state, and are in control of their actions. They do, however, get these zombie-like tendencies, but they have the power to be able to resist them if they truly want to. They seem to gain superhuman strength, damage retention, and heightened vision, smell, and hearing. They are often referred to as Hambies in the show. This is where we see Namra at the end of the season. A theory that comes to mind for season 2 is that with her abilities that she's now adopted, She's living on the other side of the wall, amongst all of the other Hambies that are there. She's learned to master the control of the tendencies that we saw her battle with throughout the entirety of the season, when wanting to bite Suhyuk and also Onjo in the final episode. As well as containing her tendencies, I think she has also learned how to use her abilities to her advantage and for a greater cause. The additional strength, damage resistance, enhanced smell, vision, and hearing is now something that she can use to make herself more powerful. And we see this in the final episode when she quite casually and confidently jumps off of the roof. I imagine she is likely acting as a leader-type character amongst all of the other Hambies that are there. She was the class president when she was fully human and the virus was non-existent. So she knows what it's like to be considered as a leader of a group. And this is something that I think we will see in the new season as not only does she have the leadership background, but she was also at the forefront in trying to get to a safe haven and was amongst humans the whole time, and not just abandoned and in hiding like what I imagine many of the other Halfbees were. I think there will also be other Hambies that have adopted the different variations of the virus and have different superhuman abilities that we've not yet seen on screen. These characters are essentially superhuman and are almost indestructible as we saw throughout Season 1. I think Namra will be trying to imprint good natures into the other Hambies, as naturally they tend to turn bad after being infected. I think she'll be teaching them how to fight the urge to resist the zombie tendencies, and to use their powers for good. There is also a theory that Namra will be reunited with Cheongsan, and that he managed to survive the bombing of the area. I think if he did, then that would tie into the different strengths that the virus can provide to its host when the match is correct. As we saw all of the other fully infected zombies be destroyed by the bomb. So this genuinely would make the Halfbees extremely hard to eliminate. The fact that the group looked so shocked at the end could also tie into this theory as well. As he would have been alongside Namra as she jumped off of the building. And they were under the impression that he was actually dead. It would be good if Cheongsan did make a return and it was in being alongside Namra. The only negative thing about that would be that Gwinam would have managed to survive the bombing too which could mean that there could potentially be an uprising in the community as some would favour good, which would be Namra, and some would favour bad, which would be Gwinam. I think Namra has an extremely crucial part to play in Season 2 of the show, and I really look forward to seeing how that leadership mentality and this new, more powerful, more confident, and in control version of Namra we end up seeing. I can't wait to see Season 2 of the show. So, there you have it. Namra's character's theories explained. What do you think will happen in Season 2? Leave a comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time. <laughs>